insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 151, Managing Teen Expectations. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen. Hello, Maddie. Hello. How are you today? I am doing all right. How about you? I am wonderful today. It was a short week because of the holiday, and it's almost over, so I'm doing pretty good, actually. That's nice. So you had your first summer band practice yesterday? Yep, I did. How'd that work out for you? Um, I got a new instrument. And a new injury? Uh, well, uh, it's not really an injury, just pulled a muscle. Pulled a muscle, yeah. Or two, I'm not entirely sure. So <laughs> your new instrument, tell us about it. Uh, it's called a mellophone, and it's basically a trumpet, but in a lower key. Okay. Most of the fingerings are the same, like... 95%, and uh, it's just a lower instrument, and they felt I would be good at it. Okay. Now, was this because you weren't doing good on trumpet, or is it because they're trying to diversify the sound of the of the band? They were. Co- I'm pretty sure they were trying to diversify it. They didn't have a mellophone last time, and like apparently a mellophone is like a like strictly marching band instrument, and I guess they wanted to have one, and they felt that I was the best candidate for it. Okay, now do you have to learn, like, new marching steps now that you're carrying this? Because it's a completely different configuration, isn't it? Well, kind of. It has a similar weight to it, but the bell is a lot heavier and larger, so it's going to be kind And it is a little bulkier than my trumpet. But I think, like, I just really have to get used to using that instrument as opposed to the trumpet. I see. Okay. Confident? Yeah, so far I'm starting off pretty good. I think for the first time using it, it was pretty good. Good, good. But that's not what we're talking about today, although we went on we, a decently yeah, we, large we, tangent we, we about that. We did talk that. about it, though, so okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that more when we actually get to another marching band video. Uh, so you can stay tuned for that. But No spoilers. <laughs> but for right now, we're going to talk about teen expectations. So expectations we place on our, te- on our children are important. They help set the future, keep them focused, and guide them through their, very, their, their, their formative years. But expectations must be realistic and achievable, otherwise they risk having a detrimental effect on our kids. In today's episode of Insights into Teens, we'll discuss the nature and importance of expe- expectations, and how to manage those expectations and keep them realistic. And we'll even teach you how to pronounce it by the end of the show, hopefully. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but first, I'd like to invite the listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions listed under Insights into Teens. You can also find video and audio versions listed under Insights into Things. We can be found under most podcast providers, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and much more. I'd also like to invite you to give us your feedback on what we're talking about or give us your suggestions for show topics. You can email us at comments at insightsinthethings.com. We're on Twitter at Twitter underscore... Oh, no. We're at Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get us on Facebook at www.facebook.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dragging this one out. Huh? Uh, okay. Sorry. You can get us on Facebook at Insights Into Things Podcast. Is that how you say That's it? That's close enough. Sure. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at www.instagram.com slash insights into things. And you can get links to all of these and more on our website at 
www.insidesandthings.com. All we say is to just send them to the website. Yes, please. <laughs> all right. Well, we struggled through that one. Hopefully, we got all the stumbles out of the way and we'll be good to go. Yeah. Shall we? We shall. Here we go. So first, we're going to talk about the nature of expectations, and this comes to us from psychologytoday.com. Expectations are psychologically important. Expectations are mental sets we choose to hold that help us move through time, through change, and through experience in order to anticipate the next reality we encounter. To appreciate the power of expectations, consider how much we routinely depend upon them. We approach each day with a huge array of them in place to help us assume what we can count on and look forward to. To wake with no to wake up with no idea what to expect creates ignorance that can be confusing and at the very least at the very least an anxiety provoking at most. Expectations are anticipatory. They can ease our way through life when they roughly fit the next reality we encounter. They can facilitate our capacity to adjust to the new and different. Although we may not like the reality we foresee, at least expectations can help us get prepared for it. <clears throat> Parents might take some preparatory responsibility for a teenager who's faced with some major life change. Mom or dad wants to help the young person build realistic expectations about what the new experience will be like in order to help with the transition. Things such as going off to middle school, to high school, or to college can all be traumatic things that kids need to learn how to deal with in their own way. Or the parents are going through a divorce, or the parents going through a divorce are careful to let a young child know what the new family arrangements are going to be. They're careful to do this because going through a time of uncertainty, there is security in knowing what to expect, and insecurity when one does not. The same principle of informed readiness applies when it comes to parents getting prepared for common changes to expect when their child begins the adolescent transition from childhood to young adult. To have a set expect to have a set of expectations that roughly fit the general transformation of growing individuality and independence, it's helpful to know. So the way they're kind of depicting it in this this first example here, I guess, is it's more like having a, a set of rules or a set of guidelines that you use to kind of keep yourself on a path, you know, on a routine, on a what to expect next. Do you find that you've got expectations that are that are kind of along those lines like okay my expectation in the summer is i'm going to get up and i'm going to do this and over the course of so many days i have this work to do and stuff like that do you find you have those expectations and and how does if you do how do they guide you yeah i definitely would say i have those expectations especially when i'm you know, at home during summer. It's like, okay, there's certain things I want to get done today. I want to make sure to do them in a timely manner. And basically it would either consist of some chores that I was planning on doing for that day, some uh, summer homework that I needed to also complete, as well as just really um, having my own time to relax and also even practice for marching band when I get the chance. So yeah, I'd say I do have expectations for what I want done during the day. And in the professional world, you have the same type of thing. Like, there's certain things at work that are routine things that have to be done. There's maintenance things that have to be done, either specific to the job or that pertain to, you know, managing resources or managing employees. And these, these expectations are sort of the things that keep you on that, keep, on the train tracks, right? It keeps you upright. You know where you're going. You do these types of things over and over, and it's kind of repetitive thing. So next we're going to talk a little bit about the understanding of the importance of expectations. This actually comes to us from PolarisTeam.com. At their core, having expectations makes the world a bit more predictable. Expectations help us transform the unfamiliar world beyond us into something we can reasonably begin to understand. Having a stable familiarity with the world 
makes it much easier to adapt to new circumstances in our lives. This is why having a reasonable set of expectations is so essential for the healthy development of an adolescent. Though there are many things in the future of your teen's life that simply cannot be predicted, an established set of expectations can help them anticipate probable outcomes and navigate through new sources of adversity. Common challenges faced by many teenagers include depression, trouble at school, divorce and family issues, social pressures, and difficulty forming a positive identity. Overcoming these sources of adversity is easiest when a parent and their teenager can work together as a team. When the world can be predicted in a manageable way, accomplishing goals and mentally developing become much more possible. So one of the things that come to mind with expectations is kind of a discussion that we were having earlier uh, in the week about the expectations of <clears throat> next year at school, right? So you're taking a few more advanced classes, <clears throat> excuse me, and the expectations are going to be increased because being advanced classes, there's going to be more work involved. It's going to happen at a faster pace. You're going to be kind of expected to work a little bit more independently than you have in the past. Knowing that, do you find that to be helpful? Do you find it a source of anxiety? What are your feelings in knowing those expectations now? Because I know the, I know how you reacted to it when we had the discussion, but when you look at it from an expectation standpoint, how does it, how do you, how are you impacted by that? I suppose by an expectation standpoint, um, it really is, it's like a good thing in that regard, because it's like, I'm going to be learning valuable skill sets from it, and having those expectations to help to guide me to that point is important. So I cannot, I understand why they set those expectations, and it makes sense for them to set those expectations. But at the same time, yeah, it is kind of anxiety-inducing, knowing there's more pressure on me, almost. Yeah, and and I think the closest thing that. I can equate to this from a professional standpoint. Two things, really. One is, if I'm on vacation, I always check my email on vacation. I may not be dealing with things from work, but I want to know what's going on because I want to set that expectation of what that workload's going to be when I come back. That, that first couple of days when I come back, I need to have that expectation so I can set my schedule and know where I have to prioritize things. So that's a good thing. The other thing is when I'm handed a new project. You know, I just got handed another big new project this week, and I have to talk to my boss tomorrow about it. There's that anxiety there that, okay, well, <clears throat> I'm working eight hours now on a full-time job doing maintaining everything I'm doing now and keeping everything going now, and I'm getting another project. Okay, so what has to sacrifice? Where do things have to sacrifice? And you start, like, churning this over in your head as, as you're handed this. Very similar to you being told, oh, well, you're going into the three new advanced classes and you're going to have 30% more work. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. I'm booked up right now as it is. That's kind of how the projects are in the anticipation. It is anxiety-driving on one hand. On the other hand, it's allowing me to <clears throat> sort of think ahead a few steps and figure out how I'm going to get it done. What's going to sacrifice? Where are my priorities going to shift? What resources do I need to call on in order to get the job done? Because ultimately, we'll get the job done. It's just about how inconvenient or how much of a pain in the neck it's going to be for us, but we're going to get the job done no matter what. And that's really the bottom line, right? I mean, yeah. So I'm not too concerned about that, but there is that little bit of anxiety that happens. So we're going to take uh, our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about different kinds of expectations. We'll be right back. For over seven years... The Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild 
in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about managing teen expectations. And now we're going to talk about the different kinds of expectations. Expectations can generally be placed into three distinct categories. The first category being predictions. A, pre a prediction is something that a parent believes has the highest prob probability of actually happening. Predictions can come in both positive and negative forms, though some negative predictions are best kept to yourself. Some examples of a positive prediction might be, I believe I will have a loving relationship with my teenager, or I believe my teenager will get into a top-tier university. An example of a negative prediction might be something like, I believe my teenager will have trouble saying no to peer pressure. Okay, well, we'll stay away from the negative ones for this podcast because we try to keep things upbeat here, right? Yeah, sure. So the next type of uh, expectation are ambitions. An ambition is something that can only be positive. See, I got the good one here. I didn't have to be negative. Hmm. Ambitions are defined as what parents want for their teenagers. These include things such as graduating from a certain school, participating in certain activities, and maintaining a positive relationship. Ambitions established by their parents are often the greatest source of pressure in an adolescent's life, though when they are communicated and established in an effective way, these ambitions can help them achieve great things. And the final category is conditions. These are the types of behaviors that a parent believes their child should do. Expecting that your child keeps you informed about what is going on in their life, behaves in a certain way, or meets certain standards are all things that can be categorized as conditions. In many ways, conditions are very similar to rules, though the difference between these depends on how they are communicated to your adolescent. When these expectations are clearly established in advance, then it will be much easier to have a more reasonable conversation with your child in the event that expectations are ever violated. As a parent, your reaction to the differences between your expectations and reality can have a tremendous influence on your teen's overall state of mind. So with that in mind, let me ask you, what do you think of the expectations that mommy and daddy have on you? Do we, do we project on you with any unrealistic expectations? Let me ask that first. I, I definitely wouldn't say that. You don't like, you definitely don't like project like, oh, I wish you would go to this college or, oh, I want you to do this. Oh, I want you to do that. Like, you really don't project like any kind of, most of the time you don't project any ambitions onto me unless you think I can handle them. Most of the time you're, there are no real unrealistic expectations when it comes to you guys. Do you think that we don't have enough expectations for you or, or that we're not, not the mixed terms, but we're not ambitious enough with the expectations we put on you? Well, I definitely know that there is one solid expectation that you normally have of me, and that's that I always do my best no matter if I do good or not. Um, and really, whenever I do have f my own fears of my own expectations, you kind of show me your expectations, saying that you don't expect me to really succeed, you just expect me to do the best I can. Okay. Well, good. I don't feel so bad about things, Dad. <laughs> what about conditions? I mean, there's we all play by rules, right? What kind of expectations do we have that would be categorized as 
conditions that we impose on you, and do you find them overly burdensome? Um, well, you kind of conditioned me to be a decent human being, at least. That's overly burdensome, I'm sure, right? (laughs) In today's world, that's a challenge. (laughs) You tell me to, you know, not speak out if there is something that I don't like. You tell me to be nice to people. Even the people you don't like, you at least should try to tolerate them. Really, the main conditions you have is just as long as you're not, like, outright screaming at somebody and as long as they you, they can have their opinion, you have yours, and you guys can stay peacefully, that's good. Okay. I wasn't expecting uh, that to be where we were going with that. Um, do you think there are expectations that we should have for you, or do you anticipate expectations changing as you continue to progress on your scholastic career? I mean, probably, considering I'm taking on even more um, advanced courses. Yeah, I'd kind of... I'd say that your expectations would probably change along with that. Not by much, um, but I can definitely see you guys also expecting a little bit more of me um, when I, as I get through it. All right, well, at least then it won't be a surprise. What else do we have? Uh, Then we have acceptance and change. When communicating expectations with your adolescents, these expectations can generally be expressed in one of two different forms. An expectation of acceptance positively affirms whatever your teenager is going through that whatever your teenager is doing is the status quo. For example, setting an expectation of acceptance might be as simple as saying, I will love you and be here for you no matter what. This is obviously not the same as saying you can do whatever you want, but it helps create a predictable, stable, and loving environment for your teen. An an expectation of change, on the contrary, is a rejection of the status quo and expresses the need for your teen to modify their behavior. For example, if your teen breaks a rule, or a law, though you will still love and accept them no matter what, it's important to communicate that this behavior is not something I approve of and you need to make a change. Creating expectations of acceptance and expectations of change is not a mutually exclusive exercise. While expectations of acceptance help your team gain the security they need to be mentally healthy, Expectations of change can also help them improve and become a better version of themselves. Then we have finding the balance between motivation and pressure. One of the most important things about effectively creating expectations is making sure that they are realistic. For example, a realistic expectation might be something like, I expect you to try your best in school. But setting an overly ambitious or unrealistic expectation such as, I expect you to graduate at the top of your class and have a perfect grade point average, can be counterproductive and, overbur- and overburden your teenager. Which you did last in this last <clears throat> uh, school year, you know, at the top of your class, but it wasn't an expectation. Teenagers, like everyone else, make mistakes and are always less than perfect. That's perfectly okay. By simply accepting your teenager as they are, letting them know that you will be there for them along the way, and communicating that you believe they are capable of doing great things, you'll have created an environment that is much more conducive to their success. Finding the balance between motivation and pressure can be difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. Managing your expectations of your adolescent involves clear communication, constant support, and a willingness to emphasize empathize with what they are going through. Do you think we meet a good balance between motivation and pressure with you? Yeah. Um, like I said, the whole example of you telling me to at least do my best in school, and if you don't, we're going to basically work through it. Um, but then you're also kind of somewhat pressure me to learn how to fix it. But, like, not in an overbearing way, of course. Um, You certainly, like, make a good balance of it. Like, you certainly give me enough motivation. And along with that motivation, with a tiny bit of pressure, you're able to help me realize that I should um, 
to help me like get through a challenge and learn from my mistake. How do you think you manage the motivation and pressure dynamic on yourself? Do you think you're because earlier on we we kind of talked about how you're the perfectionist and you put a lot of pressure on yourself. Do you think you're getting better at balancing that motivation versus pressure type thing? Um, I don't know, really. Um, I still, I still try to pressure myself way too much, and that ultimately ends up giving me more anxiety. The thing I can say is that I certainly pressure myself more than you guys pressure me, so if that says anything... And it, it does, and I and I think that's a very accurate statement. And I really think that, and we've talked about this before, but I think part of the issue is that you, when you succeed, you should be building confidence. It's almost like working a muscle, right? So if you don't work a muscle, it's going to atrophy, it's going to get weak, and you're not going to be able to do anything with it. But every time you exercise that muscle and you lift that weight, that's the equivalent of succeeding at something. And every time you lift that weight, the muscle gets stronger a little bit. Well, every time you succeed at accomplishing something, your confidence should get stronger. And it should be proportional to the level of achievement that you make with whatever the activity is. And where I think you might fall down here and where we get that mis that imbalance is that your level of confidence doesn't go up with the amount of successes you have. Because you have a tremendous number of successes. And the fact that you're number one in your class this year, you know, let's put aside the fact that you get straight A's. I mean, you get straight A's and you're number one in your class. That's a huge accomplishment. And you should be not, not getting overly confident or cocky about it, but you should relish in that. You should appreciate all that hard work that you put in last year and the accomplishment that you got at the end of the year by, by having that, that award. And I think you fail to give yourself the credit that you deserve when you have those successes. And I think if you learn to kind of digest those successes a little bit better, it'll help build that confidence and allow you to balance that <clears throat> motivation and pressure dynamic a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That's where we have to work on it. And we probably need to have a, a confidence building podcast that we can, we can kind of go into that and show you how to do some of those confidence building exercises and really appreciate the things that you've done, you know, with band again this year. Okay. Last year you were a rookie. You're coming into your second year now. So all those, those rookie, um, you know, butterflies and anxieties that you had are gone, and they're asking you to change an instrument. Not because you're not playing your instrument good, but because you're playing your instrument so well that they think you're capable of switching instruments this year after only one year in the marching band. They were so impressed with how well you performed that they're asking you in order to help the band out, we want you to switch instruments to an instrument that's better appropriate, more appropriate for the band. That's a compliment. And you have to see it as that. So it's things like that where we'll put together a podcast because I think a lot of other, other teens out there could benefit from understanding how to appreciate their own accomplishments because I think there's a lot of kids out there who are kind of afraid to accept their accomplishments and realize what it means and, and the effect that it should have on their self-confidence. So we'll, we'll do another podcast on that. All right. Uh, I think that was it for that segment there, right? Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I think we pretty much covered most of it. All right. I went off on a tangent there. I apologize. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, That's a good tangent. Good. Good. We'll get a whole podcast out of it now, <laughs> see? Yes. We're going to have a podcast of tangents. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what real ultimately what we're going for. Yep. Um, we're going to take our second break, and we're going to come back, and we're talk about paying the price for unrealistic expectations. Sounds dramatic, doesn't it? I know, right? We're going to leave that tease right there. We'll be back. In 
Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about managing teen expectations. And now we're going to talk about paying the price for unrealistic expectations. Both for, the, both for the sake of unconditional caring and for the sake of healthy guidance, the two sets of parental expectations need to be realistic to be effective. When it comes to unrealistic parental expectations of acceptance, parents can pay a heavy price. The parent who predicts the adolescent will continue a prize to, to prize parental company more than any other may, can feel surprised and anxious when the young person now prefers spending time with peers instead of time with the mom or dad. This parent cannot make peace with the loss of, with the loss of companionship. The parent whose ambition is to enjoy the same interests with the adolescent that were shared with a child can feel disappointed and saddened when differentiation from childhood and parents causes that similarity to be lost. This parent cannot make peace with the loss of commonality. Then there's the parent whose condition is that the adolescent should continue to look up to and want to please the parent as in childhood. They can feel betrayed and angry when the young person becomes less considerate and more critical. This parent cannot make peace with the loss of standing. These parents can certainly see, can certainly choose to maintain these unrealistic expectations, but they will do so at an, un, at an emotional cost, feeling abandoned, rejected, or disparaged. It is better to adjust their expectations to fit with the new teenage reality and not protest normal alterations that adolescence brings. When it comes to unrealistic parental expectations of change, the challenge can be a tricky one, particularly around issues of school performance. Don't hold performance expectations of your adolescence so unrealistically high the young person cannot reach them and feels let down. But don't hold performance expectations so unrealistically low that the young person neglects to actualize and express her given capability. The management of parental expectations is extremely complicated during their daughter or son's changing teenage years. Because these mental sets can prove so emotionally costly when unrealistic, parents continually need to check them out. The acceptance question, am I keeping my expectations current with existing alterations in my adolescent? And the change question, Is the growth I am pressing for with my adolescent compatible with what is really possible for the best? I think it's interesting that the article went in this direction where it talked about the parents being the ones who were struggling with adjusting their expectations and the effect that it had on the parents. That's a very real thing and nothing that that should be minimalized. I went through a very similar thing with Sam and when Sam went through that process you know we had a very significant shift in our relationship dynamic that I struggled to cope with because of you know how he and I interacted with each other on on that level and I I had said for a very long time there's going to come a point when you're not going to want to hang out with your dad anymore when when other things are going to be more important And it was funny because he would play it off. No, that's not true. That's not true. And I knew it was true. And I told it to him. 
And then when it happened, I struggled with it. So it was, it's kind of funny how that happened and, and that this article went in that direction. But my question to you is, do you think that these dynamics themselves are going to have a profound impact on you when you reach a certain point and those expectations change and you're more of an outward person when it comes to your friends than an inward person when it comes to mom and dad? Well, I can certainly see... Um, I definitely know that any form of change coming about will certainly affect everyone involved. That's definitely something I can say. And um, when it comes to wanting to hang out with my friends more than wanting to hang out with my family, um, I can definitely see it would kind of change the dynamic. At this point right now, like... I'm not really at that point. I still hang out with my friends, but I'm not the most social person. So you got, and like, I am able to relate with you guys enough. Um, and I know you're saying, you know, there's going to come a point and it's like, and I'm still kind of denying it, but it's like, I don't really know when that would happen or, and even if it's going to happen, it probably will. I'm, or it won't. I don't really know at this point. Well, and it's interesting because I think back to when I went through this with my parents um, and the effect that it had on my mom. My mom was a, the parent that I was closest with. And she had a very difficult time like when I moved out. And I had moved out in with my first wife. And she felt very betrayed to the point that she was angry at me. And it took her a while to get over that, to realize that even though I wasn't living there anymore, I was still there for her if she needed me. I was still helping to support her. I was there on the weekends to, to pick her up and take her out because she didn't drive. I, I would take her to the store and the doctor's appointment. So it took a little while for me to instill... Or to really, to really reset those expectations that I'm not here all the time, but I'm not out of your life entirely. And it was almost like a, a negotiation that we had to come to where I had to prove to her that I wasn't just abandoning her. Because she felt, at, by that point, my dad had passed away and she felt very alone. And when I left to, you know, have my own life, it, she felt that was a betrayal to her, and it, it took a, a good probably eight to ten months before I finally got her to the point where she accepted the fact that this is the new dynamic. Expectations have changed. They've matured a little bit, but it's not – we didn't upset the apple cart completely. So it's that fine balance, you know, that balance of expectations everybody has to have. What expectations do you have for mommy and daddy? Um, well, I guess my main expectations are that you guys don't try to instill in me any inherently toxic traits. Uh, my expectation is that in the event that either of you two have any thoughts about getting a divorce, you guys will actually be respectful about it. And if, like... Did you hear well, something I have? No, <laughs> no. It's like, I don't know. It's like, my main expectation is like, I don't want you guys to stay in a, the relationship if you guys aren't happy. And it's like, I want you, I want communication. That's the biggest thing. I want communication in our relationships. I want you guys to both be communicating with each other. I want you guys to communicate with me. If anything is going on, I want you guys to tell me, or I want you guys to tell each other and effectively communicate with each other, because I know communication is, like, one of the biggest things in a relationship. And no matter what it comes down to, I just want communication, well, proper communication to at least be instilled in our relationships. Wow, that got dark real fast. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> I never thought you were going to go there with that. <laughs> Where did Jeez. you expect I was going to go? I don't know. Like, hey, you know, I don't want to do laundry for the rest of my life or something like that. You know, like, uh, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to pull the divorce card out. I, I wasn't 
wasn't, I didn't mean to plan it that way. I was just going to say that if, like, I didn't, like, I didn't want to say, like, oh, I just expect you guys to stay together and love each other. And then it's like, that's kind of unrealistic. It, there could be a point where you guys just decide you're done with each other. But then it's like, well, then my expectation would just be, tell me and, like, tell each other, at least have some. Well, I'll tell you what. If you hear that mommy's ready to kick me to the curb. You say something to me, because I'm always the last to know anything around the house, okay? <laughs> just, you communicate with me, and I'll communicate with you, all right? Let's uh, just leave it at that. You shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll end this before it gets any worse, and I have to get my lawyer involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, please. <laughs> uh, I think that's all we had. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and I... Cringe to say this, but we're going to get your closing remarks. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, so for everyone involved, expectations, at least healthy ones, are definitely very beneficial in order to help ease anxiety most of the time, as well as um, kind of help to set you up possibly for success. But unrealistic expectations tend to do the exact opposite effects, causing way more anxiety, and causing you to not really reach that point due to that anxiety. So, the best thing is, like with everything, find the perfect balance. Sage advice, as always. Uh, and that's it for our episode today. Before we do go, I do want to once again uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast, you can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video and audio versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Teens. And you can find us on Apple Podcast, Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us some suggestions on what, in, uh, what uh, issues you think we should be addressing on the show. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insightsintothings. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a monthly free Twitch Prime subscription. If you threw that our way, we'd appreciate it. Uh, you can get links to all these and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and it's Antenna Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Unless you watch the last couple of ones in which we square, we switch things up and really confuse you. Yeah. But anyway, that's it. Uh, we're done. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.